This video is going to show you HTML, CSS and JavaScript or another way of saying that is how to make a simple web page. I'm coming from the point of view of teaching students but I'm relating this for adults to learn so that you've got the confidence to be able to pass this on to the, the students. So first thing we're going to do we're going to Google a website called W3Schools. So this site is a great tutorial ground. It's got a very good format uh, where it does a lot of the work for you so that not too much can go wrong. After I've shown you this, I want to actually get you to build a very simple web page from scratch just using a text editor which you'll have in your computer. Well, let's start with getting an overview and an understanding. So we've got three main what we call front-end technologies. C, uh, HTML, CSS and JavaScript and they all work together to do different things to present a web page. Let's start with HTML. So click on this green button here and how this screen works is that any changes over here, when you click on run, you'll see over here. And if we delete that, back to where we were. Okay, so here is a very much a bare bones HTML code. Let's break it down a bit. We've got a head section that runs from here to here. It's got an open head section and we've got a forward slash to tell the computer that we're closing the head section off. We've got a body section. It comprises of two lines here. That's essentially two lines of text. Each text has tags surrounding it, which gives it a, a format and then we close the body here. First thing we're going to do is change the format from H1 to H3, and that H3 is going to run until we tell it to stop over here. And now if we hit run, so what if we didn't tell it to stop? That format runs until we tell it to stop and it overrides anything that's past it. So even if we write this but we don't have that forward slash, we need that forward slash there to say that that particular format has stopped. And you can think of this like word like a how you um, bold text. It's essentially a very similar thing. So once you've got your elements in HTML, we then need CSS to manipulate those elements how we want them to. So if we go up into the head section, we're going to write a tag called style, and then we're going to close that tag called style, and we're going to grab the first element, h1, we're going to do open close, and then put that one on a few lines down. So we're going to write some code here and we're going to put in text dash align center, but with American spelling and semicolon. Now the text align could be right. It could be left. center. Now in CSS the format is generally the same. What element do you want to grab? The H1 or the P? So if I change that to P, what do you think is going to happen to the H1 element? It goes back to where it was and this formatting, this code, is now applied to this element. So we could say Font size is our property, colon, 
and then the value. So we might say 40 pixels and then semicolon to finish the code. So that's essentially how CSS works. We could also go body, which is going to grab all of that. Open close. So color is the property. The value would be light blue. So that's overridden what we've done up here. What I was actually hoping to do was background color. That's what I was trying to do. Okay, so there's a little look at how HTML and CSS integrate. And what JavaScript does, JavaScript is the actual programming or coding side. So the HTML and the CSS are what we call a, a markup language. And with the HTML, you get your elements in. CSS is you can move them around and color them a bit. But with JavaScript, you can actually put in logic commands. You know, if answer is less than 15, then do this, that kind of thing. So things that you might start with your children uh, doing scratch, and you can apply those same concepts over here in, in JavaScript. Uh, so there's a couple of tricks, but let's just have a look at this example here, the JavaScript. So you'll see, we've still got our HTML from open to close. We've got our body here from open open body to close body. We haven't put in a head section, we can put that in. Close. Okay, so essentially we've got this line of text here, surrounded by a paragraph element. There's a little bit in here to give it an identifier. Um, that, that gives something for the JavaScript to cling on to. But what I'll do is I'll just put a second paragraph. Excuse my typing here. A second paragraph here. And in this case, you can see if we're telling the JavaScript to run some code on which paragraph element, this one or that one. We can say we want it to be this one because this one has the ID of demo. Then we can say, okay, get the element by ID of demo to distinct one from the other. So in this case, the script is run in the body so that all the HTML elements are loaded on the page and then we can run the script. If we put the script in the head section, there's no, the elements aren't there yet to grab. Even though it looks all instant, it loads from the top to the bottom. So in this case, the script is put in afterwards. Now, the, the purpose of this script is it's manipulating the paragraph with the ID of demo to change its font size to 25 and change its color to red, as you can see here. Now, if we didn't put it in a function and it just ran the JavaScript, it would happen as soon as the page reloaded. As soon as you loaded your page, that script would run. So by putting in a function, you're delaying when it happens, and we're saying, don't run this function, which changes the font size to 25 and the color to red. Don't run that function until we click on this button here. When you click on the button, then you can run this function. What's inside the function? All of this code that changes that. So let's have a look line by line. So we've, we've got the button that looks like this and we can type something else here. We can type whatever we like on the button within those tags. And we just put in some code to say that when the button is clicked, run this. Instead of on click, we could have on mouse over, if I could spell 
and we have to run to refresh. So instead of clicking, I just mouse over. On click, create a variable which essentially is just a place to store the data. This variable is called x and we want this variable to, to go into the HTML document, the whole framework, and get the element which has the ID of demo. So which ID has the element of demo? Is it the one that's already there? Or is it the new one? Out of those two elements, it's got to be this one. It has an ID of, ID of demo. Now that we've created this variable called x, style it, CSS, and make its font size 25 pixels and change its color to red. Now, this is something that probably would be better left to CSS. You could do other things. You can make the text move around, animate, disappear, hide, scroll from the top to the bottom. This is just a simple example. Now, if we wanted the text to affect this one instead of that one, what would we do? One solution would be to cut that ID out, paste it in here, run it, because this script runs by, when the button is clicked, it grabs the element that has the ID of demo. So if we wanted to change the ID to red, we would have to go here and say, grab the element of the ID of red, and that will still work. Okay, so that's a very quick overview on the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript as separate working examples. The next video, we're going to open up a website called codepen.io, and you'll see a bit more in depth about how those three integrate.